no one does really understand it and nobody could really grasp it. I mean, think about it. Jesus, God's only son, came to this world 2,000 years ago. He lived somewhere between 30 to 33 years. And in three years, he had a ministry. And in his ministry, or towards the end of it, Jesus died for us. He died on the cross for our sins. And with his blood, he paid for it all. Why? It's not because we earned it or deserve it. Romans chapter 3 says, Romans chapter 3 verse 23 says, For all have sin and come short of God's glory. There's no one's righteous. There's no one that seeks him. Also in Paul's letter in Romans says that very rarely would someone that is righteous would die for a righteous man. It is not usual for a righteous man to die for an unrighteous man. Man, well, we are all born unrighteous. We are born with the sin nature, you know. So when we live in the flesh, we are slaves to sin. And when we are born by a spirit and born again, we are slaves to the spirit. The difference between being the slaves of either righteousness or wickedness is the outcome. Those who are under the flesh and are slaves to it has the outcome of death. Those who have the Spirit, by being born again, by believing in Christ, has life. Okay, so we got about a minute so, and I'm going to jump into the message that I want to share today. The message is called, The Power of the Blood. Why Jesus Saves. We're going to look at why he is the way. John chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to Father but before me. And right now, I see on the top of my left hand corner, it's 9 45. And so, again, today's message the power of the blood, why Jesus saves. And I've been at our home base, Romans chapter 6, verse 23. For the wage of sin is death. Let me kind of explain that briefly. That means we were all born with sin nature. There's no religion and no works that can save us from our sins. For the wage of sin is death. We all deserve death because we're born with a sin nature and we desire sin over God. Well, thank God that death is not the last word in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, because we'll all be doomed. It goes on. Romans chapter 6, verse 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The power in the blood is that Jesus gives life to all. Whoever calls upon the name can be saved. It doesn't matter who who you are. It doesn't matter how wealthy you are. It doesn't matter if you're poor, the color of your skin. Those things don't matter because all can be saved. So why can Jesus save? Well, to see that, let's go into Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 9, verses 11 through 16. And it goes, But Christ came as high priest of the good things to come with a greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands, that is, not of this creation. Not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood. He entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heap were sprinkling the unclean sanctifiers for the purity of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God. Cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And for this reason, he is the mediator of the new covenant by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions under the first covenant that those who are called may receive the promise of the eternal inheritance. Amen. So Christ 
is the high priest. He is the high priest. And it doesn't matter if he did not come from the tribe of Levi. You know, he is the high priest. Christ was able to do what no high priest could have done before him. To understand that, we have to go back in time. We have to go in the Old Testament. We have to look at Leviticus. You know, God through Moses told the nation Israel that they were going to have the tribe of Levi to be in charge of the house of God. And they're the ones that was going to have the high priests. And each year, the high priests had to offer an animal sacrifice. They had to offer blood as to atone for their sins. They had to do that for themselves, and they had to do that for the nation of Israel. That's how he atoned blood before Christ came. And so when Christ came, you know, he died on the cross. He shed his blood for all. John chapter 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Those that believe in Jesus with their heart and confess his name with their mouth. Well, why does Jesus save? Well, it explains it even more so. You know, Jesus was perfect. His blood was powerful enough to save all. The animal blood, just like everything else after Adam's sin, fell. They were not perfect. They were imperfect. Yet, the Levites had to use that, or the high priest had to use that to atone for their sins. They had to do it until Christ came. So the power of the blood is perfect. And by seeing the power of the blood, you'll understand that Christ was tempted. He suffered and he still did not sin. I mean, he understood us because he was tempted and he suffered. And yet at the same time, being the son of God, he was holy and perfect because he did not sin. That's why Jesus saves. So, I mean, look at, let's stick into Hebrews. Look at what it says in Hebrews chapter 2 at the very end of it. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 18. For in that he himself has suffered being tempted. Now, if you go in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they had the accounts of Jesus being tempted in the wilderness after he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And I believe in the Luke account that it talks about that the devil came for another season. And let me go ahead and verify that for you. See, when you listen to the word here, you're going to hear for what it is. You're not going to hear what I thought of it. I want to present the word for what it is. So in Luke chapter 4, we see at the end. Oh, there you go. So I was right. In Luke chapter 4, verse 13, it says, Now when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. I don't think it says in the Bible exactly, but I think it's fair to say that while Jesus was on earth, that he was tempted more than anybody else. You know, the devil tried to come at him with everything that he got. You know, he knew that Jesus was the son of God. And yet at the same time, the devil thinks, hey, listen, if I could get Jesus to sin, that means I destroy God's plan. Devil's knowing He's powerful, yet he's not all-knowing. He's not all-powerful. So he cannot see as Jesus and God can see. He is not all-powerful. See, he doesn't understand the power of God. He doesn't understand that he is beneath God. Because with God's power, he has the authority. He is in control of all. You got to remember, the devil is our accuser. He accuses us before God day and night. He points out our pastor. He points out our sins. Yet, Christ sits at the right hand of the Father. So God is reminded that it is his son, Jesus, that through his blood that was perfect, he paid for all of our sins. We have been redeemed. So that's what also we see when we see that there's power in the blood of Jesus and that Jesus saves. You know, look at what it says in Hebrews chapter 
at right here, Hebrews chapter 4, if you look at verses 14 through 16, it says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest, that is Jesus, who has passed through God the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness, but was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin. There you go. So Jesus was tempted just like us, probably more than anyone else would ever know. And he rightfully sits at the right hand of the Father. And we are redeemed. We are saved. I mean, look at what it says in verse 16. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So Jesus was tempted. He suffered and he did not sin. That's why his blood is perfect. That's why his blood could do what no other animal blood could not do. And that was to save us from our sins. Therefore, we could go boldly to his throne of grace by believing in him with our hearts and confess his name with our mouth that Jesus saves. Therefore, the blood of Jesus is perfect and that's why he saves. There is power in the blood of Jesus. Amen. Hello. I hope you enjoyed that video presentation. And if you want more, then go ahead and check out my podcast over at Spotify. It is the Revelation Podcast. TRP, the Revelation Podcast. Over there, I have nearly hundreds of podcasts uploaded.